you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello, welcome to Relax the Podcast. This is our spooky episode. I'm Colleen Ballinger here with my husband, Carrot. And um, we're going to be talking all things spooky ghosts today. Are you scared? Am I scared? Yeah. Honestly, a little bit. Because, well, first of all, you might notice we sound a little different. We're on different microphones today than we usually are. We're on these tiny little microphones that we're going to take to the beach later because I got oh. two microphones that are portable that we could take to the beach. So there is a little beach segment for you guys to look forward to. Um, but first, we're going to talk about ghost stuff. People have been wanting a dedicated spooky ghost story. Have we done this before? I feel like I'm done... pretty sure we have, yeah. Okay. But we're doing another one. Okay. It's been some time. I don't know when that episode was. It must have been a long, a long time ago. A while ago. We're in a different location now. Well, that's the a thing. A spookier location, yeah, I would say. Yeah, a certainly haunted location. Even as we talk right now, the way I hear our... It's spooky. I'm a little bit scared, yeah. This house that we have moved to, since whatever that last episode was that we did a spooky episode, this house is totally haunted, I think. Don't you think? It's older. It's it haunted or... It has more history. Whoa. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, ghost just pulled me out of the table. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, this this be. house I think is totally haunted. But um, so yeah, it, it looks a little different today. It sounds a little different today. We've got some mood lighting with our Bath and Body Work candles of all different scents. So it smells all wild I can breathe in yeah. here. It smells craziness. But let's get started with our relaxes. Do you have a relax? Someone? Something? Some ghost <laughs> who needs to relax today, love. The ghost of your eyes. Huh? Well, we, we so we we did film a segment where we were at the beach mm -hmm. that will appear later in this episode. Mm -hmm. And I just can't get over the fact that you um, shy from the one of the greatest human inventions mm -hmm. of that I can think of. Mm -hmm. That is sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I thought you, you were going to say eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> well, that as well. <laughs> uh, it also has to do with your ocular, um, you know, mm -hmm. nerves, I guess. But the fact that you won't wear, you don't wear, you never have worn in any circumstance, sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Right. Explain yourself. Uh, easy. Okay. What is the reason people wear sunglasses? To protect their eyes, correct? People wear sunglasses to protect their eyes so they can see better for safety so that they you know can see what's around them they're not blinded by the light well for me sunglasses obstruct my vision they make it harder for me to see and i don't like that i can't i see way less with sunglasses on. i feel i i don't like that there's just something in front of my face that's blocking my view from things and it's making things darker. I can't uh -huh. see. Like, I'm the person who has my phone brightness up all the way. I'm the person who has the big light on in every room when you Fine. walk in. I want as bright as can be. I want full HD. I don't want any filters in front to block the vish, you know? I want it full, full vision. Well, so I don't like Bless sunglasses. you in your, in your vision, but, like, they were invented because of the sun and the sun's rays and, like, it obstructing vision. So it's, it actually could could better your vision in sunlight to have sunglasses. Hypothetically, I think would be the, if I were, I didn't invent sunglasses, but if I did, like mm -hmm. it would be, those would be some of the talking points I would right. use. I've, all I know um, is my own human experience. And in my human experience, sunglasses make it harder to see. And I don't like, so you don't like wear them. So anything. you don't wear them, you never have. And no. I just, I just, I no, think that's it's. Not, I've, I've worn sunglasses in my life. No. Yes, I have. For like a, what? For like a, like a photo op or for, for, in no like real purposeful measure, have you ever worn sunglasses? Like I can't think of it. It's not I happened. mean, I certainly, I have. I've worn them. I don't, I okay. just, I don't like them and I t don't wear them long. You've bought me sunglasses. Yes. I think you bought me like nice sunglasses thinking, yes. oh, she'll wear these because they're nice sunglasses. She never did. I've worn them a couple. If I, if I've worn sunglasses, I've worn those. For? The sun? Yeah, if like, I don't know, beach trip. Like, I'll wear them for like two minutes and then Two take them minutes, off. yeah. Tops. Yeah. I don't like sunglasses. You and don't. I, and I've never met someone else who feels that way. I've never met anyone else who does that. I think most humans, like, are like, wow, this sun is like intense. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness to wh whoever invented sunglasses. I thought you were going to say the sun. 
Um, well, yeah, I'm sure also grateful for the sun, but like also like sunglasses and and wearing them and and being a whole like uh, industry. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think the sun is bright, so I don't look at fashion. the sun. Yeah, I don't care about Nobody's fashion. Nobody's looking at the sun. Speaking but they just... of fashion, we haven't even talked about my shirt today. Narwhals. Are, Where'd you find a narwhal do you not, shirt? Do you not love this? I have a crew neck sweatshirt, a big baggy extra large crew neck sweatshirt with three narwhals on it. Looking at the freaking moon and the galaxy and stars. It's beautiful. Explain it. I can't. I just know that I love it. Why? Because I love narwhals. Because of I, fashion? I th- no, certainly not because of fashion. <laughs> because I thought that narwhal walls weren't real until right. like this year. I found out narwhal or last year, I guess. Yeah. Narwhals. And you know, are real. and you know why they have the the husky tooth. Right. Yeah. If you want to reiterate for the listener, um, it's not for fighting. I remember that. Right. But I don't know why. I don't remember. Oh. Just a long tooth. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So they, they don't wear sunglasses though. So you I'll have tell you this that much. crew neck sweatshirt with the three long well, teeth I, on it. Well, because it was like it was a big thing in the episode where I like talked about. It was like it's our great, first episode it's back a great in a while, sweatshirt, yeah. and I was so excited. I don't know what size. Extra large, of course. I might steal that. It's cool. I like it. Anyway, um, yeah, fashion. I don't. Do you care mind about if that. I fill the print? F- fill the print. Feel the print. Oh, Do you mind if yeah, I... go for it. It's not bad. It's fine. It's not bad. Can I fill the moon part? You're just trying to touch my No, I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm just like, that's like obviously the more intense. It's a good print. Yeah. I feel like I could steal that sweatshirt from you. Yeah. Anyway, I don't like sunglasses because they don't, they make it so I can't see things. And I don't look at the sun. So I'm not like blinded by the sun because I'm not looking at it. I'm not. Have you ever looked at the sun? Like who looks at the sun? I don't think that's what sunglasses are for. And I don't think you're going to win this one. But I just find it strange that like you don't. It's not about winning. And so when... It, later in this episode, when you see the part where we are filming at the beach in direct sunlight and I'm wearing sunglasses and you are not, I just remember thinking like, why is that a thing? It's, it's just not a, it's not a part of your life. At, like at all. No. Like, and, and we live in California mm-hmm. and it's sunny and somebody took the time and the uh, the ingenuity to invent sunglasses. People invent a lot of things. That doesn't I'm, mean I'm I have not to saying use it. That, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that, that they exist and you and you and just don't cooperate. So I wonder if there's anybody else in the <laughs> in the world that's like, "Oh, it's so bright outside." Guess it's bright. Nothing I can do about I've never, that. I have never been like, oh my God, it's so bright outside. I'm not wearing those sunglasses. If, if but I've, you are. I've seen you do this. Yeah, for I've one second. You, I've seen you do, do this you know before. This, you know I'm motioning above my brow with my okay. hand. First of all, you know it's way easier than, first of all, finding a pair of sunglasses and then putting them on. And then you have an extra thing. I lose my everything. I lose everything all the time. I'm not I don't, saying. I don't I'm have not saying I, I haven't lost. No. You know how many sunglasses I've lost I in my know. lifetime? This is another reason why I don't have sunglasses. What, so anyways. many. So, you know, it's a lot easier than making sure you have sunglasses, making sure you know where you put them. Half the sea glass we find is sunglasses this, I've lost Look at what I'm doing. Ocean. I put my hand over my eyeballs like this, like a visor. It's free. It's easy. And I won't lose it because it's my hand attached to my arm. And I can see better. And I rarely, I probably do that once every At few At the months. cost of like looking cool, like cooler. I, I've never cared about looking cool. Come on. We both know that. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is a spooky episode, and I don't want to spend the whole time. I mean, we okay, could sorry. spend the whole time talking about sunglasses, but yeah, I'm just not interested in them. I don't. They don't do anything for me. I've never put on a pair of sunglasses and been like, "Oh, much better." I, yeah, I've only I've, ever I've, put on sunglasses and been like, "I can't see anything. I hate this. This is uncomfortable. Is my nose sweating? Where this is touching I don't my nose?" Hate, I don't. I, I don't, don't dislike this about you, and I and I don't. I just find it. I just find it odd because I, it I, odd. I've never met anyone else. I haven't either. In my entire life, that's like, oh, sunglasses? No, because then I can't see. Yeah, it's most people either. are like, oh yeah, it's sunny. I'm going to wear sunglasses. Right. I appreciate that invention, but to, I, and to I, whereas you are like, you don't own any. You Mm-mm. never wear any. Mm-mm. Like p- some people, car makers even make cars where there's like a little thing where there's this is where you hold your sunglasses. Right. To whereas you're like. Why would you have that car maker? No, I understand why. I know that I'm the only person in the world who feels this way. Right. Okay. I just, um, 
I'm not going to be swayed by society being like, anyway, this is what spooky. everyone does. It's pretty spooky that you don't. If I don't like it. Why would yeah. I? I don't enjoy it. doesn't make me see better. It doesn't help my life in any way. I've never put on sunglasses and been like, I enjoy this. I always put them on and go, I want these off my face. So because of that, why would I then wear them? If I know how I feel about them. It's right, like I have, yeah. you know, so I know I'm alone in this. I don't think there's anyone who's going to agree with me on it. But... It's not spooky enough for me, so we're moving on to spooky stuff. What's your What's your relax? My relax is a little bit spooky, but it's not like the spooky, spooky stuff. But it's a, I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. My relax is, uh, I feel bad even saying it, Lovey. What? It's one of our kids. Okay. It's our son. Our son, Flynn. Yeah. Oh, by name. Well, listen. The way that he chooses to sleep is extremely spooky. I've never met a human being in my whole life who, I mean, we all have preferences with pillows, placement of pillows, amount of pillows, when you're sleeping in your bed, comforter, you know, you have preferences. What's your, what's your pillow preference? I like a firm. And by the way, I say pillow. Fluffy. You say pillow? Yeah, sorry. Oh, well, that's okay, I guess. Grow up. Anyways. Um, yeah, okay. You like a thick? I like like a memory foam, nice like dense, thick. I don't want to, I want fluff. I can't have a flat pillow. I know you love a flat pillow, but we're not here to talk about your, yours and my pillow preferences. Yeah, we're just, we have we're a lot setting to a, We're setting a baseline for the experiment that you're Flynn proposing. Stocklin sleeps with a flat pillow, vertical against headboard, and he's wall. Well aware, and he's well aware. I'm, I'm not, he I am says not he's, he being said dramatic. He says, I sleep on wall. Am I even being sarcastic? No. It is vertical. Vertical, yeah. Vertical? He will not lay his pillow flat. It is a no. vertical against a headboard, against his bunk bed, a slash the wall. And he lays like totally crooked. And he has gotten like a stiff neck from it before as a little five-year-old. Right. And we're like, guy, put your pillow down. Mm -hmm. But he just, he loves it. He's like, I love, this is how my pillow has to be. He got it from you. I don't have to my pillow. My pillow is like flat. That. Thin, so flat. So it is. His. Straight up. But, so, but you, have, you sleep like up. Like you sleep. I definitely don't. I definitely you don't. don't. I sleep with one pillow that's fluffy. Three, three at least. And then you're, and you're on top that's of them all. That's 100% a bold lie okay um but you do like a flat pillow your pillow is kind of like not even there's not really a point to the pillow might as well not have a pillow yeah yeah so anyway the way he sleeps pillow on a pillow the way he sleeps on a pillow is very spooky it's like it just it, we eric and i talk about it every time we put flynn to sleep we're like we can't believe this guy like he insists he insists on a vertical against the wall pillow anyone else do that anyway let's get into the juicy stuff people want ghosts and we're just talking about Sunglasses and pillows. Okay. Um, so ghost stories. Okay. We've told lots of ghost stories on here before. So if you want to see past episodes, you can. I've talked about, you know, my paranormal experiences, uh, sleep paralysis, and going to a religious university. There's a lot of ghost paranormal stuff that happened there. But now we live in this new house. And this house is 100 years old. And we both have experienced, like, just weirdness right? Hauntings per se. First of all, we discovered that like we all, anyone who's been in my house agrees that like when you walk around this house, it always seems like there's someone in your, in your peripheral vision. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Like always, it seems like, like if you're alone in like the great room that we're in, the big great room that we're in right now, or if you're like walking down the hall upstairs or something, it feels like there's someone down the hall, like, and you can see them in your peripheral vision. But then if you turn your head and look, there's no one there. Like this happens probably daily. Don't you feel? Yeah, but I feel like that has to do with like just the way the like that glass works and it's like there's it's kind of like a glass. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's it's kind of like there's well there's windows on both sides and so like I don't know, like you can like the way the layout is it could it could trick you. Sure. But it certainly tricks me and it feels spooky. Does it feel spooky? Another thing. Um I have heard drums in the middle of the night. Oh, no. A couple of times. Don't like this. Like in the middle of the night to the point where it rattles the windows in my office. Like loud, like rhythmic drums. And I wasn't the only one who heard it. My friend was staying the night here on the other side of the house. And my friend heard it. And we both were like, oh, my gosh, do you hear 
that what is that? I what thought it was, was an the, earthquake. What was the rhythm? It was like I don't know. It was like a just a very consistent bum 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 bum. Like it's just like a a rhythm. It was just like a, a steady beat. Anyway, we both heard it, but at first I thought it was an earthquake because the windows were rattling, and then you know after a couple of minutes it stopped. And I was like, was that an earthquake? And my friend was like, I don't know. Is that an earthquake? I don't think it sounds like, he's like, I don't even want to say it. And then we both realized it was, it sounded like drums. Yeah. And you were awake at the time, but you were in another room because uh-huh. I was working in my office at the time. And I asked you if you heard anything and you said no. So yeah, only no. me and my friend heard it, but it was loud. It was like shaking my office. So I don't know how you didn't hear it. So that's number one. I heard it the other night. I heard it the other freaking night in my office while I was filming. Okay. And so that was spooky. And also there was one time in my office where I was sitting there and I was editing. And again, I had a couple of friends here. Okay. And they were hanging out and I was very far in my office and I heard it was quite in my office. I'm editing. I hear a woman's voice say Colleen like that. And I was like, that was weird. My friend said it the right way to my knowledge, I don't remember uh-huh. very okay. clearly. It was all a blur, but I, it was, it was loud. It wasn't like a whisper. It wasn't like, I thought I heard it. Like someone said, Colleen, like it was like yeah. someone was standing behind me in the room. And I thought it was my friend who I knew was, you know, in here uh-huh. with my other friend. And I was like, yeah. And I turned around to be like, goofy, like, well, what do you want? Like you'd be goofy. And there was no one there. And I was like, what the heck? And so then I text um, my friends, because they said that they started, they were texting me being like, Hey, the house feels spooky, whatever. Like, and they what? were feeling that way too. And I literally heard a woman's voice say my freaking name in the office. There's no one in there, nobody. And I text them and I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm bad. I haven't had the text and I can show it to you. Me like freaking out. Be like, I just heard a woman's voice say my name. I'm freaking out. Like it was so spooky. I'm telling you this house is freaking haunted. And I know you don't believe in that stuff, but I think it's haunted for sure. Also, they, okay, so we have lots of children and our children have lots of toys. And some toys have like noise things, like buttons yeah. that make s- sounds. Does it not freak you out that like randomly in the middle of the night, and it only happens at night? I've only, only ever heard it at night. Never happens. To, you're right. It never happens during the exactly. day. Exactly. At night, there is this, uh, I think it's just one particular truck. I don't know which one it is. Like in the bottom of there's a basket a few, there's somewhere. There's a few over there that, yeah. They're like, you have to push the button in if order we to, to make it go. If we walk over there right now, I'm sure one would like Try get, it. get set off. Okay, I'm just gonna go. You you stay here. I'm gonna see if it, I'm just gonna see if like the toy, because I know what you're talking about, because every time I go, because like a, it's like a, it's not a motion it's a, sensor toy. No, I'm just it's saying it's like, a, it's like a dad thing at the end of the night to like shut all the lights off in the house, right? right? And every time I do it in here, one of these toys goes, hello and well, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just yeah, talking yeah. to me and it's like freaky. Okay, just normal, just dad stuff. Just like, let me shut all the lights off. I bet you guys can't even see him over there. Let me just, I'm just we're just all going to bed now, bedtime. Shutting off all the things. Nothing happened. Of course. Why is it not going off? It's not going off because we're filming. It goes off every time. And it goes off every time I do this. I know, every night. It's so spooky. I just got chills. I know. Okay, so literally, it's like a truck. There's like a truck that goes off. It goes like like that, and it's like in the bottom of a basket. My kids don't even play with that toy, but it, it it's one of those toys that like only goes off if you push a button. And there's no one over there. No one's putting toys away. No one's touching any baskets. No one's doing anything. And it'll go off in the middle of the night. I swear to you, it only happens at night. I don't understand why it's. I feel like it happens every time I do this. I know. It's like what I'm every saying. time, like I'm like, all right, it's bedtime. Like you know, just doing the routine, shutting off all the lights. This is what I'm freaking saying, guy. Guy? Literally, this toy is so spooky. And there's another one that's like voices. Like, okay, so that's another spooky thing that happens all the time in this house. It's And it on, literally only happens at night. I've never heard it go off randomly during the day. I don't even know what toy it is. It's like lost in the abyss of our toys. I don't even know which one it is. I've it's never like heard it. It's the basket, yeah. Yeah. Just that. And then also, another creepy thing that's happened since we moved in is our bedroom door, like, um, will open like it'll be fully closed like not like you know how sometimes you close a door but like the little latchy moment thingy doesn't go all the way in the hole so then it's like can be easily pushed open do you know what I'm talking about like what, how door latchy holes work? yeah I know latchy you know, holes what's it, what are those called like little 
the little nubby, and then like the holy, and then the nubby goes in and out of the door. What's that called? Lock, like a latch. No, it's not a lock. It's like a it's like a door thingy. Latch lock. I don't know. Anyway, what, what do you mean? Like, there's another word for? Well, it's not a lock because it just like it goes into the door and goes out of the door. Hinge. Like hinge. No, the hinge is on the other side. So wh- the part like that where it closes. Right. You know what I'm talking about? It goes in like a hole. There's like a hole. That, like, <laughs> anyway, whatever. I think it's a latch. No, it's not. What's that freaking? That's gonna drive me crazy. Anyway. There's a way you can close a door where it like doesn't close all the way. So it can easily just be pushed open. Do you know what I'm talking about? You can sure. push a door open versus yes. like if the door is fully closed, you can't push it open. Well, we have cats and my cat Daisy loves to sleep with me. So sometimes she will push the door open to our room to come inside. So shortly after we moved in, this started happening where like the door is shut and the door will like swing open but not all the way it swings like halfway open and it stops abruptly so it's not like a gust of wind opened it because a gust of wind it would either go slowly or go really fast and slam it literally opens like i'd say a foot like and then it's abruptly stops okay happens in the middle of the night and the first time it happened i was like oh daisy must have just come in the room and i sat up and looked and daisy was not in my room she was nowhere in there this has happened multiple times and either Daisy's already in the room or she's not, she's, she didn't come in at all. Okay. It's called, Eric just looked up what that's called. The gear box. Is that <laughs> really what it's all, called? These are all just the different mechanisms of a lock. So is it a well, latch? It's not a lock. Is it's, it a deadbolt? No, 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 no. It's not Roller a lock. Cam? Lovey, it's not a lock. Mushroom it's, cam? It's like what's on Hook a door. Pin? Hook? You looked up locks. Pen? We're not looking up locks. What are we looking up? The, a door. It's like what's in a door. A doorknob? No, what's the doorknob connected to? It's on a doorknob, but it goes in the side. How do you not know what I'm talking about? No, never I know seen it, a door. I know what you're just saying. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what a door is? Yes, but like, okay, so like there's the doorknob. Yes. And then there's like the thing that goes in the, the, hole. the crevice of like the... The other door or the wall. Right. What mm-hmm. is that called? That's the question that we're trying to answer. And you searched, what are locks called? <laughs> no, I'm saying it's called a... <laughs> no, I searched diagram of a locking mechanism for a door. Like I, I did, no, 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 no. It's not... Um, I mean, they have locks on them at times, but like sometimes they don't. Sometimes you have to have a separate lock, you know, somewhere else. My phone is buzzing and it's spooking me, spooky town, because I am scared. I, I'm really easily spooked, by the way. So this is all very scary to me. That's the other thing. Okay, so anyway, I was talking about the store thing. So while Eric looks that up, so... A deadbolt is what that part is called. It's called a... No, it's not. It's, it is. No, 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 no. That's, you're looking at a lock. That's not what I'm talking about. You're just talking about a knob? <sighs> no. <laughs> I'm going to go to this door and show Wait, you. don't leave me. It's scary. Look, love. Come back. It's going to be scary. Do you see what this thing is right here? The pokey. This little pokey. Yeah, the springy pokey, yeah. The springy pokey. It goes in and out. I know. What's that called? It's called the deadbolt. It's not a deadbolt. Face a deadbolt plate. is something else that you twist in and it bolts into a door. Anyway, door latch parts terminology. This is, I feel like oh we're going to get to the bottom. Why are we talking about this? We're talking the latch. About it's stories. called the latch, love. That's what I said originally. Oh my God. Yeah, a latch. No, I said latch 10 years ago, and then you said it's not a latch. I think, I, well, we have video evidence of who said it first. Not that it matters, but anyway, here's the deal. This happens all the time where my door will be latched closed. Yes. Yes, it is a latch. It's latched closed. Like it is latched mm-hmm. in, it's closed. And that door will open up like a foot in the middle of the night. And it's not Daisy pushing the door open. It's no, like nothing could have done it because the door is freaking latched. And tonight I was looking up like spooky stuff. I thought about telling other people spooky stories. I was like, I'll just talk about our house. We're not going to tell spooky stories. And then um, I looked up, I was looking up spooky stories. And then Eric and I were texting about where are we going to set up to do this ghost? I was like, well, maybe we could do something spooky. We can like light some candles in the dark or something. While we're texting about it, I'm laying in our bed cuddling Maisie who just fallen asleep and the door does it like a foot just goes, and the door was I know it was closed because I closed it hard because I didn't want it to open I didn't want Daisy to come in and like wake up the, the babies or anything and it did it they didn't want us while we were texting they didn't want us to talk about them well or they do they because well, I was like or well, they do and they appreciate because we were like it. talking about where to film where should we film should we film outside should we film in the house and right when I asked that it was like it opened up I was like they want me to film inside they want me to film inside this house. They're like, here's the way. Let me lead you to the location. I'm telling you. And the lights will flicker in our house all the time. That could be bad, like electrical wiring, but like also could be a ghost. You never know. Um, the only times that I'm scared in this house is when I see our cat's face out 
the window or when a, one of our children wake up in, in the middle of the night. I find that very spooky to, in darkness, see a child that's like, has woken up from a nightmare. Like I find, I find like that's very spooky. I feel like that's the only time I'm not scared is if like the kids wake up in the middle of the night. No, I'm, 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 well, I'm saying it, it startles me. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's like not common. And but it's, not because of ghosts, just because like it wait, it's like startling. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's like, a, I don't know, like children. I feel like it. So I looked up, I looked up like um, hauntings in the area of where we live. Mm-hmm. And there are a few like kind of spooky ones. Yeah, there's a lot. Well, there's a lot. Yeah. But a lot of them are like people hearing kids mm-hmm. or it's a lot of like um, w- women mm-hmm. in like white flowy gowns, like <gasps> doing things, making noises and things. Um, there's a beach that we go to Mm -hmm. frequently that is famous for hauntings because people frequently see like at, after sunset, like a figure, a woman in like a white flowy gown jumping off the, (gasps) I'm legit like terrified right now. Bluff. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Have you seen this? No, I have not. And I don't want to know what you're talking about. I don't know that story of the person at the beach, but I, I know that I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm, I would not, I don't like going to beaches at night, so I'm not going to do that. So I probably won't see, but I am legit like very scared right now. I feel very like spooky vibes. I feel you should be. I should be spooky. You know how we were talking about Burger King? Is this a ghost story? Yes. Um, I don't know that we were talking about Burger King. We were, we were talking about Burger King last week. We were like, what happened to Burger King? Are there Burger Kings now? Oh yeah. We were talking about how like they used to have this like, um, chicken, like chicken sandwich that was like a kind of like oblong. Yeah, it was so good. The, that was so it was good. Just like lettuce mayo and a chicken. Just slab. lettuce mayo and like a, a big oblong chicken sandwich on a sesame bun. And their was chicken like tenders so were the best in the world. They were so good, and their fries were like okay at one point. Yeah. But then we don't even see Burger Kings, if at all, mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah. In any case, did you know there's a haunted Burger King in our? In our what? Area. There's no Burger Kings in our area. There is one, like a few towns from here. And apparently, like, it's on the internet as haunted because of that someone Lovey. passed say it. in a bathroom there. Lovey. Oh, I don't even want to. Oh, my gosh. Oh. And so apparently this particular Burger King is very haunted. Oh, God. I don't like it. How did you feel about, like, ghosts and Not great. paranormal stuff and all that growing up? Fine. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't even allowed to think about it. Like, if I even thought about a ghost, I would, like, immediately pray for forgiveness. Like, I was, like, not allowed to think oh. about it or, like, know about it or be interested in it. Like, it was all very, very evil <clears throat> because it's not that I didn't believe that it was real. It was that there wasn't such a thing as a ghost and all this different stuff. It was, like, there was demons and there was angels and that's it. And so if there was something mm. paranormal, it was either a demon um, or an angel, which I always thought I had one angelic experience, but and a lot of scary experiences. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like um, for me, it was mostly like I thought of it as cartoons. I thought of it as entertainment. I thought of it as like I was at um, a summer camp and there was that's kind of how I knew it was. It was professionally told by a summer camp counselor that was like really good at like scaring us and I would be scared. Um, so I didn't think of it as anything more than that. And then as I got older, older and and life is life certainly more interested and and scared by like hauntings and things like that there was a guy what was his name his name was like john edwards or something like that edward scissorhands no it wasn't no it was he was like a talk show host and he was like i i can talk to to dead people okay. you know what I mean it was kind of like that kind of a like thing phenomena whatever mm-hmm. um and I remember really not liking it mm-hmm. and that was like at a young age like I, f- I felt like that was even at that young age I was like this is opportunistic or I, I don't know something something mm-hmm. about it like it just didn't agree with me or even if it was true I don't know I don't know I don't know this person you know what mm-hmm. I mean and who knows but like it disagreed with me yeah um, and, and scared me. Um, yeah, to me, any of it growing up was like just evil, demonic, satanic. 
But then when I got older, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to ask questions about this and try to learn more about it and understand what it is because I wasn't even allowed to ask any questions growing up. Um, but as far as, like, that kind of stuff, like, you know, celebrity-ish type of, like, mediums and whatnot, I, like, learned a lot from someone who is on a ghost hunter TV show, and we became good friends, like, when I was on tour in the beginning of my career, and he taught me a lot about ghosts and paranormal stuff, and he's so genuine, and he's so real, and I know he's not a fake person, and he's not, like, doing it whatever for, you know, just the TV show, like, he legit is a ghost hunter, and so I was like, oh my gosh, like, I know this guy, I love this guy, like, he's my friend, and, like, I, I trusted him, but then I also saw the Long Island Medium, you know that show, the Long Island Medium? Yeah. I saw her live, perform live, and it was incredible. It was, like, really impressively good, but another, like, celebrity medium did a reading on me, and... I remember this, yeah. Didn't get anything. Yeah. Like none of it was right. So. But you've had, I feel like people have been to our house and have been like, oh. Yeah, I've had, oh, I've had, yeah. Get I've a had, vibe. Oh, yeah. And then you had like a, um, I don't even want to say it. What? Because this is something I've never done anything with, but like a Ouija board. Mm-hmm. Why are Ouija boy boards, like it's a literal game. I don't know, but like I, I never had one as a kid, never played with one with any of my friends. No, they like, scare me too. I've literally never done it because I've just been like, no thanks. Like it's not yeah. my thing. But like you have one. Mm -hmm. And it was like on the, the stairs over there. And I remember like someone came over and they saw it and they were like, oh, you shouldn't have that. Because mm -hmm. they were like, because I can feel things going on and they don't like that being here. Like... Yeah, I mean, I always thought of it as like, it, yeah, certainly I feel that way too whenever I see it. I'm like, oh, you're not supposed to have it because I was taught that was, again, like Satan's board, like Satan's game. But it's like literally a board game type of thing. But at the same time, like I do feel like icky that it exists and is around me. Okay. But I did it for YouTube videos. Like it was like silly for me. It wasn't I've like. Never, I've never done it in my life. We're not doing it right now. Do you know where it is? Absolutely, I don't. Absolutely not. I do not. Know Are you it. sure? I'm positive. I have no idea where it is. Because imagine if you broke that out right now. I don't think I would do it. I feel like I'd be too scared. I'd be too scared. I legit would be too scared. I really promise you I would not do it. Like, if you, you brought know it out, where, I'd leave You know finger. where it is. I swear to you, I have no clue. It was on your stairs. Well, if you think I know where anything is ever in You this don't know house, where anything is. Like, I literally don't know where anything is. I don't know where I am currently. I don't know where anything is ever. If so, if like, a, if the police showed up right now and were like, show me your ID, you'd be like, I don't know where it is. You know who would know? Hmm. Flynn. I feel like Flynn <laughs> knows where everything is always. I'll He's got like, such oh, a great memory. What a great memory my, on that kid. My, I, where did I put that sweatshirt? He'll be like, Oh, you left it oh, there three days ago. Yeah, he'll be yeah. like, Oh, I, it's actually um, in the bathroom behind this shirt, underneath this. Like, he'll know, he knows where everything is, which is great because when he forgets where something is, like, he'll yeah. be like, Where's this toy? I'll be like, Well, where did you last put it? And it actually works on him. You know, when people go, like, Well, where's the last time you had it? And you're like, Oh, like, I haven't thought about no, that. No, yeah, he can. You, you literally go, Well, where's the last time you had it? You go, Oh. It's in the kitchen. And then he'll yeah. run and go get it. He like remembers every time. Anyway. Um, well, I'm going to go get the uh No, we Ouija don't know board. what it is, first of all. While he's off looking for the Ouija board, we'll take a little spooky, spooky break and have some pleasant, lovely time enjoying the beach. So please enjoy this fun little segment, a nice little break from the spookiness um, of us at the beach. Enjoy. Goodbye. Hello, welcome to the beach portion of the podcast. Is it? Are we doing the whole thing here or just a portion? No, just a portion. I don't think we have time to do the whole thing because yeah. the tide's coming in. The tide is, yeah, you picked a great spot for this. I know. I can see that there was a rock slide recently on the cliff directly behind the camera. Well, here's uh, It's the, a very small beach and it is approaching high tide. I know, but I wanted the beach I wanted to go to, there's a lot of traffic and yes. it would have taken like a half hour or more to get there. And so I went to a beach that's closer, but the oh, tide- Oh, this is great. Can't complain. I mean, I can. I think this is awesome. There's a, um, a naked man eating an orange about 20 is. yards down the beach. We are at a nude beach today. Is it a nude beach? It must be because that man is naked. Like, isn't nudity? It could be break I don't know. Isn't they, nudity in public illegal unless you're at somewhere that's like desi designated uh, like a nude beach? Is there a nude beach around here? I feel like there's, there's one. There's plenty. Yeah. Oh, I, what? There's well, I mean, Why do you know so much about... Well, nude do, beach and their rules. I don't. I've, have you ever been to a nude beach like, and gone, been nude? No. I have not either. Um, but I, I know because as a kid growing up, I went to all the beaches 
uh -huh. along the coast of Southern California. Uh -huh. okay. There's a lot of beaches. And sometimes you happen upon a beach where there are naked people. Okay. And I just assume those are nude beaches. So, All right. I mean, wouldn't you assume that's what this is since there's a man yeah, fully no shame. nude I eating mean, an orange? It's how we're brought into this world. Podcasting at a nude beach today, man. Um, well, is that I, the title? I thought uh, since this is our spooky episode, love. I'm seeing dolphins. Are you joking? Oh my gosh. Unless I was, yeah. Oh my gosh. There's dolphins. Do you see them? <gasps> are you serious? That's magical. Those birds are diving like maniacs oh gosh, too. Yeah, they sure They're are. feeding on something. I wonder where they went. <gasps> there, there they are. Is. You see them? Oh my gosh, yeah, I saw, I saw it with my eyeballs. I don't know if I saw it with the camera. Uh, they, did somebody say, yeah, you should do a podcast? That, there's, there's a tail. You saw that? They're right there. And there's another one. Woo. There's a bunch. Did somebody say we should do the podcast at the beach again? Or is this just uh, no, they you did. Okay, like so, coming here and looking well, for rocks? Okay, so this episode is going to be very um, ghostly. People have always wanted us to do a fully dedicated, like, spooky episode. Yeah. So this episode is our spooky episode. but We're talking about dolphins at the beach. But now we're taking a little spooky break to talk about dolphins at the beach and nude people. Oh. Nude people might be spooky to some. I don't know. Yeah. Is nudity spooky to you? Uh, what do you mean? I don't know. In what in what context? It's a spooky episode. Um, no, I don't think no, I'm not. Nudity's not scary to me. It's scary to me. I've it's scary my, to, for me to be I've shown my butt nude. on television. You have. I sure have. I wouldn't do that. Not and that's not judgment. I think you have a beautiful butt, and I loved when you did. That. I was so proud of you. It was so awesome. They to had see me just butt. wearing a, a beige sock. That over, was crazy. Yeah, in front um, of a hundred extras. Sorry, there's no a fly on your skin. Yeah, that was wild. Netflix. And um, I couldn't do. I would be too insecure. I was, I was, uh, I just had to get over that real quick. Yeah. Yeah. You look so cute right now, by the way. Do I? You really Why? do. I don't know. You just look cute in your little Hawaiian shirt and your glasses and the sunlight and the I'm beach ready. and the dolphins. You said we're the doing this at the beach. Talking about yeah. your butt. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yes, you asked a question. You said, did anyone ask for this? Yes. Sh Cheyenne said, yes, please do more relax on the beach. Um, and also, uh, Cheyenne said, I actually just ordered our first Tumblr for my children and I. Oh, that's so great. I mean, there was a bunch of people who talked about wanting to have the beach episode in the comments. It was really lovely. I believe you. I promise. I just don't want to be like looking down at my phone. But one person did say it might be good to, I wish I could find it on my phone right now, but I, I think I'd rather just be in the moment with you and just tell you what I remember that the comment said. Sure. So sorry yeah, if, I, if, you said, if you said this comment, I'm sorry that I, I don't remember your name and I didn't memorize it. And I don't have it screenshotted, but um, shout out to you if you're the one who said this. But someone said we shouldn't be like searching for sea glass while we're at the beach. We should do the sea glassing first so we don't get distracted while we're podcasting. And then we show each other what we got. So here's the issue. Eric went this morning. Well, to, it just so happens oh I have my, my sack of glass. I can already see what's in there. And I am going to scream. You are going to scream. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So Eric went sea glassing this morning. And uh, he did. sent me a photo while I was editing that was just a picture of a marble. And Don't I, sp spoiler. I'm not, I'm not spoiling. I'm saying, I'm saying how we got to this L point. It's literally spoiled. No, I'm it. saying how we got to this point. Okay. I, that's the one thing I know that you got. Uh huh. And well, I. They didn't know. Well, now you know. I lost my mind. I was so excited. And I was like, oh my gosh, we have to record the podcast episode today anyway. Like, how about I go to the beach right now and I go find stuff and don't tell me anything else you got and then we'll just show it to each other at the beach. So I came to the beach like 45 minutes ago before Eric and I went to this beach, this nude beach apparently that I've never been to before and there was nothing. It's high tide. I couldn't find any good sea glass. There wasn't very many good rocks. And I had, I'm going to be honest, love, I had a bad attitude. And I have to say that I think now being a rock hounder, a beach comber, if you will, for many months, I think the first tip I would give someone is you got to be in the mood and you got to have a good attitude. Good attitude. Yeah. Well, this is like, this is, you're out in mother nature and she's not going to give it up no. to you if you're like, you know, bad vibes around. I feel, I feel, yes. Like when you are just free spirit, happy, like yes, in the moment, you yeah. know what I mean? Like nothing's going on. You're just there and part of it. That's when these things reveal themselves I to totally you. I totally agree. Not to get all crunchy, but like, Crunchy it up, because I but when totally you're, agree. It's when you're grumpy instead of crunchy, like, 
You ain't getting no glass. <laughs> you can't be grumpy instead of grungy. Yeah. And I think I was grumpy. I think I got here and I was stressed about like finding stuff to show you and finding the right pieces so that we had something interesting for the podcast. And I literally found nothing. Like yeah, I found no a few opposite. small little pieces. You got to be okay if you don't find anything. I know. And I just wasn't. I had a bad attitude. And then right before you got here, I was like, oh my gosh, I've had a bad attitude. And That's Mother why. Nature was like, no, girl. I'm not giving you these rocks. You're grumpy. You don't deserve. Right. Like be deserving. Be grateful that I give you anything. You have the beautiful sun. Sunshine, you have the ocean. There's you dolphins have, hopping about. Well, and that's the thing is, once I changed my attitude, mm. we started podcasting, and I was like happy. Then dolphins start jumping. Hello. Yeah. You gotta be crunchy, not grumpy. You gotta be cool. You gotta be kind. You gotta. That be was my sixth grade graduation song. All I know, all I know. Anyway, Colin graduates. Um, the reason I'm saying that is because I don't have anything to show you really. I have a few little chunks, but they're nothing exciting. So I want to see what you got because already well, let's a big get sack if that's, of glass. Let's give the people what they want. Um, we were talking last night, mm-hmm. and I had like a theory about sea glass that I wanted to try this morning, and I absconded to the this beach that we both like. Absconded? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that word. Yeah, and I, and I was like, I don't think the glass is like... You know, we, we got that comment like a week ago where it was like, someone was like, oh, I'm an anthropologist and I study the dates of this. And I was, I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, they, well, those people like digging things. They're not just like looking at the ground being like, nope, it's not here. So I started like looking under stuff, like getting under the top layer of sand or rocks or whatever. And that's where the stuff is, man. It's under the rocks. It like hides underneath the it's rocks. It's hiding. It's hiding. But like I'm, I'm like a glass hunter now. It's like, like in, it's like in the crevices. I wouldn't say it's I, under the rocks. It's like in the crevices of rocks. Right. And I'll, but I'll sometimes I'll literally like I'll, I'll look at the terrain, and I'll like crouch down, and I'll just be like, if I like I want to have to think like sea glass. Like if mm-hmm. I were sea glass, where would I be? And be one, you know what I mean? And yeah, I'm we've lost you, our it, minds. We've completely lost our minds. Yeah. This is just. Uh, this podcast is just documenting multiple mental breakdowns. Yeah. Um, but so here, I'll show you some stuff. This is the one I saw. Okay, so this I've is a part of a plate. I've been looking for blue and white china. Blue and white china That's plate. apparently a thing. This is a, a huge chunk. This is so cool. It's a huge chunk of blue and white china. I've never seen a piece that big. I've always... I've Whoa, always look at your chunks. you got so many big chunks in I've there. I've always wanted a piece of blue and white china, and now I have two. <gasps> You got two I'd never found one before, but I see that people uh, collect those. But I've always wanted to find them, and I never found two, and that's a big old, that's a big one. And then here, this is for you. I found this <gasps> oh. rock. Ooh, this has got some agate on it. I'll have to get this that's thing. That's what I thought. I'll get this I, thing I'll a little a bit rock. wet and see what it looks like. There's always, like, a rock that jumps out to me, and I know that you love them, so I'll yeah. always try and bring you Thank home, like, you. a rock. But that one, one, especially when it was wet, it looked very... Yeah, when it's... I can tell it's agate, so I just need to get it wet. It's like it could have, like, fossils in it. There's some druzy pockets. Hello. Cute. Love her. Uh, you said druzy pocket? Yeah. What's for the layman? What's a druzy pocket? Uh, it's like crystally. De- you know when you open up um, like a, a geode? You know those sure. geode rocks? <laughs> where, inside, where you open up a rock and inside is like crystals, like amethyst this, yes. and like sparklies. Really pretty sparkly crystals. You would probably just be like, oh, I've seen that Nat Geo crystal. kit on the shelf at like Michael's. Yeah, so the little tiny. Um, the little tiny sparklies, like in here, uh-huh. you catch the sunlight in that little pocket there. See how there are like sparklies in there? Yeah. That's druzy. Druzy. Yeah. Not a good name for it. I like it. I would call it sparkly. Yeah, you can call it that. Nothing about it is druzly to me. It's a druzy, man. As far as I know, that's not even a word. Uh, you already spoiled this. <gasps> it's incredible. That is the best marble. That's the best when marble. When you told me that, that people who are like sea glass hunters, like one of their their proud like crowning moments is when, when they find marbles i thought it was the most ridiculous thing I did too, yeah i was like what do you mean they're just marbles and then i was also like how are you finding marbles on the beach right like if i were to take this marble throw it into the ocean it's gone forever you it's think gone, what do you, it's gone forever like it's getting it's going to the bottom and then it's getting buried under like years worth of sand and debris and whatever i can't understand that it's possible that somehow a marble comes back to shore and then you find it. And then it. I find it. You found four, love. This is my fourth marble that I found. And it's... It's beautiful. It's freaking awesome. It's the best marble. Found, it, every time I find one, I go... Oh! That crushes and the I other dance. marbles, love. That crushes the other marbles. At first, I was like, that better not be like rubber, because it looks like it could be. But the way like the, the salt water and the, the natural tumbling of the ocean kind of weathers these, these things, like it's really cool. I don't so know. So cool. Marble. Love That's it. a huge find. Chunk. 
Big look at this chunk. gorgeous blue, blue this chunk. Beautiful blue chunk. For the listeners out there, they're like, wow, cool episode where you're talking about things that we should be able to see and we can't see anything. Well, I'm describing it. Look at this ribbed for her pleasure. Oh, that's a big rib. This is like a mason jar ribbed for her pleasure moment. Wow, lovey, you got um, so much stuff. Here, hold on, let's... What wait, hold on, th then there's this. This is my like one of my favorite <gasps> ones today because I feel like that's Ooh. very old. And I wonder if that's the year? I don't know, it says 49 on the bottom. Because it's, it's like, like a thinner, the of a very, very, very thin... old looking bottom of a bottle. Yeah. It's not round, it's like oval. That's so cool. So this is just a little preview of all the sea glass that Eric found. This is probably a fourth of everything that he found, if that. And you want to see what I found, lovey? Yeah. You want to see what I found? This is all that I found. So if you're watching, you'll see. But if you're not and you're just listening, it is like, <laughs> oh, I just dropped the only big piece, too. And one of them is an agate. Maybe that's 10 pieces smaller than a dime. That's great, love. Great job. That's all I could find. Um, I did find a bunch of rocks, but that's not your thing. So it's no, not just interesting me, to you. Show me some rocks. They're not even exciting, love. They're just like. What you got? They're, What's there's that? Com colorful chalcedony. Calcedony. Brecciated jasper. I've been saying brecciated jasper. I think it's brecciated or something. I think I'm saying that word wrong. B r e c c i a t e d. How would you say that? I would say brecciated, but I think I heard someone say brecciated once. I wouldn't even try. Okay. Um, well, I wanted to uh, read a couple more comments while we're here. Oh my gosh, those birds are diving into the ocean, yeah, like diving. On. I still see those those dolphins occasionally over there them? too. You still see them? Yeah, occasionally. Yeah, oh they're like gosh. feeding on something. It's like How a cool. must be a school of something moving through. That's awesome. Okay, anyway, so I wanted to read a couple of other comments while we're here. Okay. One of them was about how you s c called me out and came for me last week because I called it daylight savings. Remember that? Yeah. And you're like, it's daylight saving. Um, one of the top comments says, less than three minutes in and we're picking sides. Google says daylight savings. Eric really almost got slit me too, Colleen. And got what's you? Gaslit? Yeah. Um, it's, no, I, like, was going to talk about it, and so, like, I, I Googled Daylight Savings that day before we recorded, and mm -hmm. that was, like, the number one thing. It was, like, people think it's Daylight Savings. It's actually Daylight Saving time. Really? Yeah. Well, there are a lot of comments saying that they say Daylight Savings. Did I make, did I make fun of you? Did I make you, did I, did I, did I, I think I just said, I said it, like, gently, and then it called you yeah, smart, no, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm he, what the comment is saying is that it, the commenters are picking sides. It's oh. like the weekend debate. Oh, oh, so some people are on my side. Yes, there yeah. are people who are saying da daylight savings and daylight saving, but it seemed like more people are say saying savings. Daylight saving time. I daylight say daylight savings. savings time. I think I always said daylight savings, and then I read that and I was like, acted like I didn't just read that that day and called you out <laughs> for it. <laughs> I think that's oh really what God. happened. An another top comment we got last week was about the puppets. So I had, I'd read a comment the week before that said like, oh my gosh, I love that the puppets are in a different place every week. So last week, where would you do them? The puppets were like making out in the background. Okay? They were. And Brianna said, you just know it was Eric who placed the puppets like that I in the background. I didn't even know that that happened. And there are a few comments like that there. that were like, oh my gosh, Colleen doesn't even know that Eric did that. Eric didn't do that. Plot twist, it was me. <laughs> It was me. I'm taking you guys to a nude beach. I'm making puppets make out. Wait, so now I get to now we get to put the puppets in a different place every episode. That's really fun. Yeah, I thought that would be a fun. I thing. like that. Yeah, I wasn't even gonna mention it, but then people started mentioning it, and I was like, all right, should we not even mention it? Should we not even have said any of this? Yeah, just we'll we'll have this conversation, but just beep out the word puppet. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, there's just a lot of comments that said yes, please, uh, more sea glass beach segments. Uh, Forever Nicole said, I need all the sea glass rock hound sections. I grew up loving rocks and shells and sea glass, and now seeing you guys have me, is having me search again. Um, oh, that's sweet. There's just so many comments about how people wanted us to do this at the beach. So here we are doing a little segment on the beach. Maybe someday we'll get brave enough. Oh, there's a big sand flea on my phone. Get off. Um, maybe someday we'll be brave enough to do an entire episode on the beach. But uh, for now, we got to go because the tide is coming in, and uh, we don't want to get you know, swept away by the ocean. Because we're doing the number one thing you're not supposed to do right now. What's that? My back is to the ocean. Oh. I'm not supposed to do that. Is that like, no, a, no. It's like a sailor saying? I don't know about saying. I'm not a sailor. It's just like a human saying, I think. Like, don't turn your back on the ocean. It's like a thing. You know? Yeah. It's powerful. It's strong. Well, I've seen a lot of those videos where it's people, they turn the back of the ocean, then they get hit by a wave. You know? You've seen videos like that? Yeah. Oh, that sounds terrible. Why are you watching those videos? I just, no, I'm not like looking for them. I just, I just have seen a video where it was like a girl being like, 
trying to look cute for a picture, and then she gets hit by a giant oh, wave and geez, falls Louise. down. Well, that's you haven't seen that video? I feel like everyone's those. I don't think I've seen that one. It's just, it's just a thing. It's just like well, a thing. I don't want that. It's to like be a genre me. of videos. So, uh, we're gonna we're gonna stop now because the tide's coming in fast. So we're gonna be done, and uh, we'll get back to our little spooky spooky episode for you. I hope you enjoyed that very different vibe at the beach. It was like dolphins and joyful and bright and sunny and pretty. Like what a what a stark difference between this and that. Um, Anyway, what? Definitely the weirdest episode we've ever done. One of the weirdest, but I mean, I have a million different stories. I, I, can I tell one story? I don't think I've told. Maybe I have. I probably have. I don't know. I feel like we've talked about everything on this podcast, so I don't know what we've said and what we haven't. Sure. But I know we've done a spooky episode where we talked about spooky things, so I know I've talked about like my sleep paralysis and weird ghost story experiences that I've had, but I don't know that I've ever told about like the one time I felt like an angel was there. Why do you why do you roll your eyes? I didn't, at I didn't me? mean to. Did I? You you couldn't have seemed more <laughs> like I, you thought I was the stupidest person in the world. No, go for it. No, go for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mean. No, I didn't mean. For no, it's it okay. To be that. It's okay. It's just, I, I think I, maybe I, an angel like pushed my eyes closed. <laughs> okay. Rolled them. Okay. So it was involuntary, is what I'm saying. So like I said, when I was little, demon did it. Um, a demon did your eyes. Yeah. Oh well, I don't know about that, but maybe it was an angel just helping you fall asleep. Mm-hmm. So. I only thought, I didn't think of ghosts as a real thing. I thought it was you're either an angel or a, there's either angels or demons. And when, like when I was growing up, I was taught like when you are not alive, and if you're unalived in any way, you just are then either in heaven or there's another place you can go. Those are the options that you have for an afterlife. And I believed that, past tense, I believed that you either went to one place or the other and there was no coming back to the earth. So if there was something paranormal, it wasn't someone who had passed on. It was either an angel from heaven or a demon from hell. It wasn't a person who once lived here. Does that make sense? At what age? My childhood, like little girl. As a child? Like Flynn's like, age, yeah. As a child, you're like, it's one or the other. Yes. That's intense, man. That's <laughs> church. I mean, that's what no. you learn in church. I know, but I'm just saying like that's... Um, well, my church, I mean, I'm not talking about all churches, I'm just some of my personal experience. Anyway, so this is what I believed and this is what I thought. And um, so if anything were to ever, like when I, so I didn't have any paranormal, like true paranormal experiences until like much later in like the like college years, um, I started to be like, oh, maybe there is ghosts or something. But when I was little, I had this really hard time. Um, I had really bad homesickness. I couldn't spend the night at people's houses. Um, I couldn't, like literally anywhere. I couldn't go on school trips if they were overnight because it didn't matter if it was a friend or a grandma. If it was nighttime and I was not at my house with my family, I would panic and get really bad anxiety and just cry and cry until like, I'd be like, please beg, please call my mom. I have to go home. Like, and it was so embarrassing when I was at friends' houses. I didn't want them to see me cry and freak out. This is a really bad problem I had until it was probably like 12 or 13. Yeah, 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 or now. Yeah. Um, is that how old I am? I, th- I don't know. Oh, I, don't I think okay. so. Anyway, so um, this happened all the time. And one time I was at my grandma's house, and I love my grandma. My grandma was just, this, and, and she was literally an angel, like, and now is an angel. She it was, it was just perfect, wonderful grandma. And... I would always try to sleep at her house and I couldn't because I would just cry and beg to come home. Oh, no. And so one night I went, I was like, I'm going to do it this time. Like I was so excited. I was probably like 11, maybe 10. I don't know. And I went to my grandma's house and I started crying because it was nighttime and I was stressed that I wasn't home at my house with my parents and my siblings and I needed to go home and I needed to be with them. And I was worried something was going to happen to them. I was worried something was going to happen to me. I just was a mess. And I was crying and she's like, no, 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 you don't need to go home. It's okay. I'm here. I'm going to protect you. Like everything's going to be okay. And she's like, let's lay back down. So she, we go back into the room and like, she, um, you know, helps tuck me in and she starts rubbing my back. And, um, so she's rubbing my back and helping me fall asleep. And I close my eyes and I'm starting to like drift and like starting to feel a little bit more calm and like, okay, maybe I can do this. And then it's, it's going on for a while. And then I hear like singing, like humming. And I'm still rubbing my back, whatever. And I open my eyes to say something to my grandma, and she's not there. But I could feel someone rubbing my back 
and I heard someone humming. And I could literally feel someone rubbing my back. And I, like, it was my grandma at first. My grandma was there. Yeah. But then I closed my eyes, and when um, I must have maybe drifted off or whatever, but, like, then I woke up, and I could still feel someone rubbing my back, and I heard someone humming, like, and... There's one there. You and remember this as like a haunting, vividly. it's like a vivid haunting. But it kind wasn't of haunting. I was not scared. Not, not in a scared way, but like you remember it not as just like, oh, I was like half asleep. Like it was kind no, of like No, it was like, like, like very much real. Like it very, it very felt real. But I remember thinking, oh, that's an angel protecting me and that's helping me. Sweet. And then I was like, oh, and I remember praying, going, thank you, Jesus. Like, thank you for protecting me and sending your angels to protect me. And I fell asleep and it was like the first time I was able to spend the night there. And I remember that being like a really special like moment to me throughout a lot of my childhood and teenage years. And like a story that was like, I know that that angel was there to help me do that. And like, well, and I could feel it and I heard it singing and I felt it rubbing my bag and blah, 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 blah. Now who knows if that was a dream, like you say, um, I was there and I don't think it was, but like, it could have been, who knows? Maybe it was an angel. Maybe well, it was no, a ghost. No, you're saying, you're saying what it was because you're saying like, you're like saying like, oh no, it was a dream, but like, I'm, I think it was, what do you think it was if it wasn't a dream? I don't think it was a dream. I think it was something. I felt it. It was not a dream. You don't feel in a dream. You don't wake up from a dream and when you're awake, feel someone rubbing your back like firmly like that. You don't feel that right, when but you're then awake. You, but then you wake up and then they're not there. Yeah, there's no one there. Right. Cause, no, I was. Because you were dreaming. Because you were dreaming. No, there, there, I don't see someone there. Right. I feel it, but I don't see anyone. Because it's... A ghost? An angel is what I thought at the rubbing time? Rubbing your back? I need this ghost. <laughs> I, want, I just need... I just need... Like, I, I just... Like, is this your grandma? I, and if, I don't care. Well, no, because my grandma well, was alive at the time. Rub, I don't know. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Someone should... I just need someone to rub my back. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what, maybe you're right. Maybe it was a dream. Maybe it was a ghost. Maybe it was an angel. Maybe it was nothing. Maybe it was the wind. Maybe it was, did you hear that coyote? Are you freaking kidding me? A coyote just howled. Thank God we're not outside. I would be so. I know. I wanted to do this outside in the dark. Chaotic. I am yeah, you so. Would, yeah, you would have been, it would have so, been unrecordable. You just yeah, would have been it like. Yeah, wouldn't have been usable. Yeah. I'm so scared of the dark and I'm scared of outside. I'm scared of noises. Oh, that was the other thing I hear at this house, by the way, is footsteps on the roof all the time. Yeah. Because birds walk on the roof. Birds that sound like humans. Yeah. Like crow birds. A crow. That I know. I hear, it, like a I hear it all the time. And like, and we will talk about it every night. You'll be like, did you hear that? Was that you? You know I what I mean? Like, banging you'd be like, is that you downstairs? Is that you? Did you just slam a door? Every night, like, I feel like it happens every night in this I am, house. Now I'm getting actually kind of spooked. I feel like we need to end the episode because I'm like, actually was that, getting was that you? Yeah, it happens a lot. Don't you feel scared right now? I feel kind of scared. No, I just, no. What? I, what? How could I be scared? We're talking about like ghosts that like rub your back and sing to you. Like, it sounds amazing. I was trying to tell amazing. a nice story. I was trying yeah, to tell no, not just great. only scary ones. Um, it's got a little thing going on. What? Got a little thing going on. If, if, if a I ghost have a thing could, going on on my no, neck. No, me. So like I'm just saying, like if, if a ghost oh, could rub I see it. What you're saying. Okay. Yeah, it would feel good. Oh, well, I'm not gonna summon anyone. If there are any things, spirit thingies, no, ghosts, don't stop. Here, so, no, I'm, I'm saying I like, like we come that. in peace. Like, oh, like yeah. we don't want any like we respect you and like you know I don't want to like welcome anything. You know, it's like I'm. Do you ever hear music in this house? Oh my god, we have to stop talking. Do you? I just, I told you I hear drums. Yeah, but do you ever hear, do you ever hear piano? No, but I've always thought that would happen. I've always thought that we'd hear piano because we have an old piano in this house. I just heard a voice and I'm not kidding. You heard that, right? That was her. She it didn't, was, she didn't meow. It was the cat. She just, she, she didn't meow. She doesn't sound like that. She goes, <laughs> that's not how Daisy talks. It Daisy's, was. Daisy's love. voice I isn't looked, that deep. I looked at her and she just goes. That sounded like a little kid, love. It didn't sound like a little kid. No, it was her. She goes. She goes. Mur, mur, mur. No, it wasn't. It was just our cat. That's by the way, Daisy's my indicator because I feel like animals are. I feel like animals are good indicators of like paranormal stuff. So like, if I get spooked in the middle of the night, if Daisy just sleeps through it, I'm like, I'm fine. But if Daisy like looks and's like, what's going on? Then I'm like, oh my god, I get really scared. Well, that's the thing. I feel like that. 
scares me the most is when our young children are like waving to no one, waving to no one, laughing at no one, mm-hmm. talking to no one. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, who are you talking to? And they like can't really communicate like as I'm going to have nightmares yet. tonight. we got to end this episode. <clears throat> I'm legit going to have you are You are actually going to have nightmares tonight. I really tonight am. From this. I really, I'm not, I really will. I'm going to have, I'm going to be spooked all night long. I'm going to sleep with the lights on. I feel like I am too. Well, we need to end this episode. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was somewhat enjoyable for you. Um, but thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We got a lot of great comments. I didn't even get to them. We read a few at the beach, I guess. But there was more I wanted to read. I don't think we're going to have time today. So just leave all of your questions and comments and concerns and thoughts in the comment section below. Because I did get, oh, there's so many comments I wanted to answer. But I'll, I'll save some of these comments for next week and just leave a bunch of comments on this lovely episode. And we'll read them next week. Maybe. I, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm actually terrified. I can't even think of words. Did you just, <gasps> a demon just came out of your throat. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you just we, have the involuntary burp, too? Yes, I did. We mean well. We're good people. We like our, we love our family. We mean well. I heard something. Did you hear that though? Like it just, the demon, the burp. The you just demon did? burp. Of the- I had one earlier <laughs> this episode. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I hope we didn't spook you too bad with our nude beaches and our sunglasses talk. But um, let us know if you want more episodes like this or not. And I guess I don't because I'm scared. So I'm gonna go. But. Uh. See you guys next week. Bye.